Hi folks, we are back again and today we're going to be talking about the concept of a limit of a function. We're not going to be talking about um, tangent lines for a while. You're not going to see tangent lines uh, come up till section 2.7. 2 so we're just talking about what it means to have a limit of a, of a function. So let's look at this example. What does it mean to say the limit or what is the limit as x goes to 2 of this quadratic function? You know it's a quadratic function that opens down, so what is it getting, we mean what is this function getting close to as x gets close to 2 from both, both sides? It turns out we don't even care what happens when x equals 2. If you look at the graph, uh, it's pretty clear I think on this one that as x gets close to 2, you can see it better if I write it like this, from the left, from values less than 2, the y values are getting close to 8, and as x gets close to 2 from the right, from values greater than 2, the y values are also getting close to 8. This is why we say the limit as x goes to 2 of 6x minus x squared equals 8. Now, the definition that we're going to be working with here, uh, definition of a limit, the limit as x goes to a, this is in section 2.2, uh, the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l means we can actually make the y values arbitrarily close to L. In this case, the y values are arbitrarily close to 8 uh, by taking x su sufficiently close to A, uh, in this case 2. Now the key to this definition is you have to be able to approach A from both sides and we don't care what happens when x equals A. In this case, we don't care what happens when x equals 2. In this, this next example, if you try to plug in 0 into the function here, you find that it's undefined. The bottom is 0. So that's, that happens a lot. So you just can't plug the plug the value in. Uh, what we're going to be doing here, for the most part, on the on section 2.2, is just using our TI graphing cal calculator to ap approximate these values, or to get a, a, an intuitive idea of what's going on. Enter the expression of the function. That's that's kind of a challenge in itself, isn't it? Let's see. The function would be parenthesis. Well, we're going to do it like this. Y1 equals parenthesis square root of x plus 4 minus 2 close parenthesis divided by x. That's what, how we're going to enter it right there. So left parenthesis square root of x plus 4 close parenthesis minus 2 close parenthesis on the numerator divided by x. And let's go zoom decimal. I like that. I like that feature. I like that zoom window. Uh, I can't really tell. Let me, let me try uh, a different window. Let's go negative 1 to 1 on x and how about negative 1 1 on y. If you graph this, you get, uh, looks like the limit exists, doesn't it? As you get close to 0 from both sides. If we use the trace feature, as x gets close to 0 from the left, the y values look like they're getting close to about 0.25 or 1 fourth. And as you get close to 0 from the right, it looks like the y values are also getting close to 0.25 or 1 fourth. This is why we say the limit is 1 fourth. Table feature, nice nice uh, thing to use. As we get close to zero from the from values from the negative values from the left, like negative point one, negative point zero one, uh, negative point zero zero one, you see the y values are getting close to 0.25. From the right, like point one, point zero one, point zero zero one, you see the y values are also getting close to one fourth. Okay, so if this were a quiz and I ask you to show uh, new, numerically, I, 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 what I want you to do is use your TI and then, um, and then just draw this table. Or if it was graphically, I want you to sketch the graph. Okay. All right. So a good question to ask is, okay, how can a limit fail to exist? And it turns out uh, there's three main ways a limit can fail to exist. This this first example, I hope you guys re remember what what um what this uh, function looks like. One over x minus two. Isn't it just one over x? that's been shifted which way? To the left or to the right? It's been shifted to the right two units, right? And, and what we have is a vertical asymptote. If you were to enter this, uh, well, let's see, one, make sure you put, let's try that again, one divided by parentheses x minus two, and again I like zoom decimal. I like zoom decimal because um, it forces you to land on the inter integer values. Would you say this limit exists as x gets, gets close to 2? I, I, yep, probably not. We'd say the limit as x goes to 2 from the left, put a negative sign there, of 1 over x minus 2, as x gets close to 2 from the left, it's pretty clear the y values are becoming very negative. So we'd say negative infinity. And the limit as x gets close to 2 from the right, 
of 1 over x minus 2, as we're approaching 2 from the right, it's pretty obvious that the, um, the y value is getting very, very big. So positive infinity there. We would say, however, that the limit does not exist uh, whenever you have a vertical asymptote, it does not exist. Now, I just want to mention, if both sides went to positive infinity, or both sides went to negative infinity, uh, if both sides went to positive infinity, we'd, we, we, it, the limit also does not exist, but we'd say the limit is infinity. And if both sides went to negative infinity, we'd say the limit is negative infinity. Uh, you could use a table feature. So if, I, if you did this on a quiz or test, I'd expect you to draw, sketch the graph like we did on the TI. Table feature. Uh, let's see, let's delete these guys. As x is getting close to 2 from the left, we could say like uh, 1.9, 1.99, and so on. You see that you're getting very, very big negative numbers. Uh, that's actually small, te technically. Let's just say very negative. How about that? Uh, 2 from the right, 2.1, 2.01, and so on. Very big positive numbers. So therefore, the limit doesn't exist. So that, that, that's, one, that's one way a limit can fail to exist. Vertical asymptote. Okay, let, let's do a couple more examples. How about this example here? Limit as x goes to 1 of um, absolute value of x minus 1 divided by x minus 1. Okay, well, uh, notice again, as x, if x equals 1, the bottom is 0, which makes the whole thing undefined. So let, let's enter this. So again, on, on this homework, we're just kind of getting an, an intuitive idea. All right, so we enter, how do you enter this? Well, y1 equals abs of x minus 1 divided by parentheses x minus 1. That's how you enter it. Where is the abs button? Well, you go sec uh, it's under math over to num. Abs of parentheses x minus 1 divided by parentheses x minus 1. Uh, zoom decimal. Let's see what happens there. Uh, let's see, folks. Would you say this limit exists? Uh, no, it doesn't. The, the reason why it doesn't is because they don't agree. Both sides have to agree. Remember part of the definition. What's the limit as x goes to 1 from the left, from values less than, less than 1? If x is less than 1, if you use the trace feature, isn't it true the y values are always negative 1? So that's negative 1. The left limit exists. What's the limit as x goes to 1 from the right? Values greater than 1. Use the trace feature. Um, values greater than 1. We're getting close to 1. Values are always 1. So, um, so therefore the limit does not exist. It's not a vertical asymptote. This is an example of what's called a jump. Jump. Okay? Let's do one more. Uh, this is kind of a crazy function. Uh, notice, again, when x equals 0, it's undefined because 1 over x is unde undefined. One thing I'll tell you, though, this function is, is always between negative 1 and 1, isn't it? Because the sign of anything is always between negative 1 and 1. It's also an odd function. Can, can, you, can you tell me why it's an odd function? Uh, remember what the def definition is? Anyway, well, you can do that on your own. Let's see. Let's enter this function. Clear this. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's just enter the sign of parentheses 1 over x. And um, let's go right to the graph. Uh, I'm going to try zoom. How about how about zoom trig? I haven't done that for a while. Um, what do you think the limit is? Do you think the limit's zero? Uh, is it? I don't know. Let's zoom in a little bit. We'll, we'll we'll find out now, right? Whether it is zero or not. No, it turns out it's not. It's not. Well, let's do it one more time. Now we'll for sure find out, right? And the answer is no. In fact, we get more confused. It gets more confusing the more you zoom in. Uh, this, this is an example of what's called an oscill oscillation. It's kind of hard to sketch this graph, isn't it? If you try to sketch the graph, it might look like this. So the closer you get to zero, the wackier it gets. Anyway, this is, uh, you do the table feature. That's kind of nice on this one. Um, uh, did I enter the function? Yeah. Second table, delete all this stuff. The closer we get to zero from the left, negative 0.1 negative point zero one, negative point zero zero one, you see that you're getting random numbers on the on the um, sign graph. And same as on the right. Point one, uh, point zero one. Anyway, so it oscill oscillation is what we call it. Okay. I guess we gotta go. We'll see you uh, in, in class.